Alrighty, so that brings us to our open portion of the show and the comedical stylings of Mr. Mark Masters. How we doing, Denver? All right, all right. Where is the number one pencil? You know? Does it have an eraser? Is it yellow? I have so many questions about this. But I want to talk to you about something that's upsetting to me. It's how difficult it is to fold a fitted sheet. Look, I'm not trying to solve a Rubik's Cube right now. I'm not trying to hop on the spectrum. I'm just trying to complete a basic domestic chore. You know? I'm not trying to fold 95 origami cranes and promote world peace. I'm just looking for something that's kind of neat, okay? I'm looking for a rectangle. I'm not looking for a stand-up game, a twister, that's more likely to lead to a flurry of F-bombs and a pulled muscle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But some people, some of you guys, zzz, zzz, I mean, it's a thing of beauty. I don't know how you do it, I'm jealous. When I fold a fitted sheet, it looks like an old man's drawing of a triangle. It looks like a paper mache project of a napping family dog. <laughs> when I fold a fitted sheet, it looks like the stars and stripes might, if folded by the Taliban. <laughs> are, we, are we getting a picture here? Look, I'm sorry I'm not an octopus with go-go gadget arms and a PhD in geometry to defeat this bundle of curves and rubber bands. Who can fold a fitted sheet anyways? She can. Martha Stewart and Klansmen. <laughs> who have it hardest of all with the pointy hats and the eye holes and they can't even read. Klan is spelled with a C. Somebody should tell them. Exciting news for Colorado, El Chapo is moving here. Watch out real estate prices. He's going to the Supermax. You guys know the Supermax? They, they call it the Alcatraz of the Rockies. Eh, that's generous. That might be a stretch. Alcatraz is in the shadow of San Francisco. One of the most cultured, beautiful, wealthy country, uh, con cities in the world. Supermax is in, is in the shadow of a meth laboratory. That's an exaggeration. It's in the shadow of a meth cook kitchen. It is anything, in Pueblo, Colorado, is anything but the most cultured, wealthy, sophisticated place in the world. I, uh, I was uh, getting on to I-25 the other day. You guys know these, like, two lanes with the light at the front, and there's a perfect number of cars to be there when you first turn on that little hill, right? You don't want zero cars, because then you're gonna, you're gonna have to wait for the light to go green. What you want is just one car, right? So then you can get to a comfortable 30 or 40 miles per hour, and right as the light turns green, you just blow by that car. You know what I'm talking about? And then 10 to 12 seconds later, you slam on your brakes, and you got a 30-minute mid-morning commute on 25. The other day I was, I was doing a glance and go, and the weirdest thing happened. I, I, do you guys know about the glance and go? It's, uh, I'll, I'll do it for you, you gotta pay attention, it's quick. It's, it's like, okay, you, gotta, you don't wanna make eye contact, you don't wanna be creepy. What you're doing is you're evaluating the make and the model of the car next to you, the make and the model of the person driving the car, you know, to figure out what you're gonna do when that light goes green. The other day I was in line, like 10 cars deep, just waiting you know, moving up slowly, finally get to the front. And you know, what you're looking for in a glance and go is to make an evaluation of the situation. If you have a, you know, heavily tinted Camaro over there, you're gonna pause a beat when that light goes green, okay? You're gonna let that overcompensator just fly onto the highway. If you look over and you see, you can't even see the car window, it's a truck that is so tall that there are implied truck nuts on the back, 
you're going to let that truck pull in front, right? Get a good view of those nuts before you get on the highway. If there's an old lady in a 62 Chevy, well, that's a different story. I'm going to put the pedal to the metal at that point, friends. And even though I have an old car, I should be able to beat her. Having an old car is nice. You know, if you go to, I don't know, A Basin or Park Meadows, and there are a sea of newer SUVs, it's easier to see to find your car. Unfortunately, I drive a Subaru Outback. So it's just me wandering around with my clicker and a couple ladies with short cropped hair just saying, have you seen a Subaru with a cracked windshield and a bike rack? I'm looking for the same thing. <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, so I get up to the front, light turns green, I do my glance and go, and a little microprocessor in my brain just pfft, pops. Same exact car as me. Same exact person as me. Stubble, receding hairline, look, glasses, looks just like me. I don't know what to do. Light is green, we're both stuck there. Nobody's moving. Light turns red, one car way back honks, doesn't know what's going on. Light turns green again. Okay, 12 cars behind each of us. Now there are more honkings. I don't know what to do. Anyways, his name is Gary, and we're going skiing in a couple weeks. I hope he's an okay guy. I do hope he doesn't say this one thing now. Have you guys heard this, all the bells and whistles? This phrase, what is this old timey malar, did this come from medieval times? Who is carrying around bells and whistles at this point? Like, I don't even know, like, what kind of situation could you tell a story where you'd use the phrase, all the bells and whistles? Like, I, I can think of one, it's not even a good one. In 2019, maybe you're telling me a story about a time on a casting couch and things got creepy and weird, and you were really glad you had an armful of whistles and cowbells, and you just clanged and blew, and well, not blew, but you know, made a lot of noise and got out of a pickle, away from a pickle, you know? <laughs> Buddy of mine just bought a Tesla for $85,000. Do you live in these things? That's incredible. He said, it's okay, Mark, because it has all the bells and whistles. I was like, that is ridiculous. Who spends that much money on a car and doesn't get a horn? <laughs> I had to travel down south recently, and I found an Airbnb that mentioned having all the bells and whistles, which upset me. This isn't like a Hilton or Hyatt. A host can say anything they want. Blatant misrepresentation right there. So I did what I think any of you would have done. I angry booked it. Planes, trains, and a lift ride later, I pull up to the curb with my roller, and I stand corrected. Right next to this cozy bungalow, huge church. Across the street, soccer fields. It really did have all the bells and whistles. I gave the host five stars for listing accuracy and didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> all right, Denver, you are terrific. Hello to everybody out there. I'm Mark Masters. Look me up at markmasters.co. Let's see each other again. Oh, it's good. My name is Dana. Dana it's like Hannah with a D, literally. That's how it's spelled. And I know it's a love session. I don't generally write love songs, so I don't really have any love songs, but I have a lot of songs that are semi-anti-love, I guess. But they're not really anti-love. They're just, you know, those failed, broken relationship type songs or unrequited love type songs. First one I'm gonna do is called Cinderella. And this is actually a song that's about domestic violence. So if that gives it any type of indication. Welcome to the darkness of Cinderella's life. She didn't just live here, no, this is where she died. And they said happily ever after, well, what a fairy tale. Cause when the story ended, Cinderella fell. She gave him everything she was, cause that's what she did. But he took advantage of 
of her love and it put her heart to rest. Welcome to the tragedy of Cinderella's world. There is always more to the story than what is told and heard. And you can put glass slippers on a maiden's feet. You can promise her riches, but you can't force her to feast. She gave him everything she was, cause that's what she did best. But he took advantage of her love and it put her heart to rest. Cinderella could smell wine and sweet perfume. Cinderella didn't know what to do when she could not find the pieces of all that fell apart so she curled up alone in bed one night and she died of a broken heart cause she gave him everything she was cause that's what she did best but he took advantage of her love so she put her Cinderella the fair maiden always was alone Cinderella died that way too cause her convictions were gone And what would you do if your prince was cheating? How can you withstand the immortal beatings? How can you believe in fairy tales when you hear the true story that I tell of Cinderella? Cinderella Ooh. Thank you. By the way, I will say that I love that I found this place, and I also love that there's a place like this for people like us. So that's my love story. <laughs> This next song is called Pick on the Floor, but I don't need it. Uh, it's called, um, oh gosh. <laughs> Forgot the name of my own song. Help me out here, friend. <laughs> it's called Don't Care No More. And yes, this is a, a, one of those uh, anti-love songs. You don't want to be here no more I watch you now as you close the door Don't want to watch you leave Don't want to see you go But you ain't coming around here no more So when you call me up on the telephone And you wonder why I'm not home I don't care no more You don't do anything for me But you make it sound like you're the one who bleeds But you're not me down, then you kicked me aside. Now you say that I'm the reason that you got no pride. So when you slam on me and call me names and you tell everyone I'm to blame, I don't care no more.
Thank you. Time's up. Thank you so much. All right, Dana. I told you I got that wrong. And if I haven't butchered your name yet, give me a chance, guys. I'm still working on it. Um, we have next up J.J. Frazier. This first tune is um, in the nature of a gift, as well as being an exercise in jazz chord forms. A long time ago, there was a lady to whom I gave this gift of a sunshine song. It's just a little sunshine song to help you through the day, to help you through the dark times when clouds get in the way, to remind you I love you when I am not around, or oh, to help you find your smile when you are down. As you go through the hours and the days of your life Take care that your dreams do not fade from your eyes For this world can be cold But there's no need to fear You just reach out your little hand I am here Yes, and darling, I know Maybe better than most How this world can give you the blues But blues just ain't your style And it's much more fun to smile Let the sun come shining through and because we are a little pressed for time, I'm going to dispense with the instrumental break. And it's just a little lullaby to help you through the night. It's like two loving arms that hold you so tight. And the darkness can make you feel all lost and alone But a true love can always bring you home Yes, and darling, I know, I know maybe better than most How this world can give you the blues just ain't your style And it's much more, much more fun to smile At the sun come shining through Just let the sun come shining through Whoa, 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 let the sun come shining through Thank you so very much. Um, this next tune was developed from some lyrics that a uh, wonderful, prolific songwriter in uh, Monument, Colorado, by the name of Sandy Ray, sent to me. And um, she said, I like what I've got started here, and I really love the hook, but I don't have a tune. And so I read the lyrics and just, oh yeah, it goes like this. Um, we actually made a recording of it and people were saying, yeah, that's really nice, but where's the chorus? So I had to go back to work and um, we are still negotiating on some of the lyrics, but... Um, Life can get you down Drive your dreams into the ground And make you feel 
Be nice about it. You know life can get you down. Drive your dreams into the ground and make you feel you will never try again. And when no one is there for you, showing that they care for you to help you climb that hill, it seems so steep. I'll hold you close until you fall asleep. you close when you are scared I'll hold you close I'll be right there my love is something you can always keep I'll hold you close until you fall asleep And the vet confirmed your fears About the dog you loved for years And you know That you have to say goodbye And when your heart is torn in two And you need somebody Who will wipe away your tears each time you weep I'll hold you close Until you fall asleep I'll hold you close When you're in need I'll hold you close You can count on me My love is something You can always keep She goes until I fall asleep. When the years have drifted on and the children grown and gone, and you feel Life is empty and too short But still I will be there for you For showing that I care for you And living this one vow I swore I'd keep I'll hold you close Until you fall asleep you close when you are scared I'll hold you close I'll be right there my love is something you can always keep I'll hold you close when you're in need I'll hold you close you can count on me my love is something you can always Close your eyes now Fall asleep Thank you all very much. I'm J.J. Fraser out of Golden, and I appreciate it. See ya. Nicely done, sir. Good job. Hi, my name is Stevie, and I am Josh. Okay. Uh, we're going to play an original now. Um, the song is about when you're dieting and you really want to have that last cupcake. This is called Guilty Pleasure. Yeah, but you have it anyway. That's why you feel guilty about it. So. 
Catch us on YouTube, Steffi and Josh. We just put this song out. Yes, with a video. <laughs> the shore of my youth, barefoot, dressed in J.C. Penny plain pocket denims and a red flannel shirt. I'm in bed next to you. 
The driveway between the house and garage has become Lake Michigan. I praise the morning sun, the potential to see the aurora borealis once again. This night, the darkness, the sun, the moon, and the aurora awakened by the crush of this past week stampeding gray clouds. It is painful on the shore I am not standing on. My toes absorb the cold of the undersand. There are boulders old as earth holding back the pine trees. The sun rises with comfort over both death and life. The quilted colors surrounding me are beautiful. The clouds have passed, yet I still grieve, missing those who can no longer miss me. I am not in my turquoise bikini wishing for a kiss from someone whose name I will not remember. I am not looking over my shoulder. I am not in my green polyester sh shorts at log rolling lessons. I am not grieving anyone because no one has died. I am riding my bike home. I am sharpening my pencils. I am at the window of my youth. I am in bed with you. I am trying to pray. I am praising the morning sun. Wow. Wow. Headed to heaven. The snow-covered drive has tracks through it this morning. I drive up it as if headed to heaven, and I am. The pine trees and police pay no attention to me, and Christmas lights wink at me as I pass. I remember how I prayed, prayed you'd look at me in the dusk of my future when the street lights went on for the night, how my ice skates were almost too tight and mittens were so much better than gloves, how your imagined kiss tasted like smoky whiskey and the tingling electricity of my almost frostbitten feet rose up inside me to be warmed by a love. As I pulled my mittens on this morning, the same lights still shine in the night. The same kiss is on my lips. Wow. And then this is in testament to my uh, mother and father's love. My dad passed away three years ago, and uh, my mother is still living. First Robin, this is the image that can't be forgotten. My mother bent over his coffin whispering something to him. The hole dug by hand, the nest abandoned, a bed emptier than you or I can imagine. Here is the robin again, her wings like branches bent and bare, sometimes waving in the wind, expecting spring, sometimes spread wide in silent prayer. All righty, that was Julie Cummings. We have Michael Hanker up next, Mr. Michael Hanker. All right, my name is Michael Hankel, actually. Michael, Sorry. that's all good, man. They're both German, I think, Hanker and Hankel. I uh, come from Chicago originally, living here in Denver, looking for musicians always. I have a band called the Dog Patch Ramblers. If you'd like to check us out, we're on Facebook and YouTube. It's coming out with an album. This song isn't on it, though. This one's about uh, my grandpa. He was, uh, just passed. He was 93 years old. And the hostess man. I was the lucky guy to grow up with that. This is called The Ballad of Glenn Fletcher. passenger got a lot to hold maybe was a dreamer hope I had enough to offer any many roads through this town that's getting old and the deeper my sleep well it seems to be there is some to know that those 
tears you dry and dry there in your smile just knowing i had a sweet now it's time to go Sometimes taking a left turn, sometimes turning into the swerve. A world war could surely make you cold. So I found me a woman with five. She married me, and so alive. She ran air in my eyes until she had to roll. That those tears you cry will dry there in your smile. Just knowing I had the good, now it's time to go. That those tears you cry someday they'll dry there in your smile. Just knowing I had the good, now it's time to go. Thank you. I'll keep this, keep this short and sweet. I know we got a few more people here. This is a song called "Waiting for My Love to Come." <laughs> the sun is setting. Sitting on my back porch And I'm waiting for my love to call Now there's so many habits That I need to torch Good Lord, and waiting for my love to call In those times When it's so dark that my heart can't see That's when you find me And I know that my time soon be here and I will have no more fears till then I am waiting for my love to come now it seems like every day I need to write a song about my love and the waves of calm crashing down on old ships that I used to sail and helping me build much stronger ones in those nights when it's so dark there's not a star to see that's when you find me and now as i sit here on the floor looking at our door now wait a minute I think I hear her keys. Now there's no more waiting for my love to come. There's no more waiting for my love to come. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, folks, it looks like we got about eight minutes or so left, so unfortunately I don't think we're going to get to Jake at the end of the list. Sorry about that, Jake. Uh, but we do have Miss Amy Irish up, so if she could do about four minutes, then we can leave four minutes for David Bellow. So just four minutes? Okay. No, I do not. All right. So many things, many poems, many stories, many songs have been written about Mother Earth or the feminine earth, how about the masculine earth? How about the lovely, rich, earthy earth? This poem is called The Breath of the Earth. The sweet, low breath of the earth is slow on my insomniac nights. It is a gentle touch to each branch, each quaking, sleepless leaf. The earth is sleeping, 
The stars are sleeping, the sky is sleeping, but only the earth reaches out by instinct, searches the darkness for my throat and heart, still shivering, awake to sing me to sleep. I rock and in the rise and fall of the earth's body, breathing when the earth breathes, hearing and feeling the heat of that rich, warm soil. I am one with these rhythms of breath. And when the earth turns, rubs his eyes, says, can't you sleep? I taste his sweet, delicious breath warm on my skin. And I know I will soon, that I cannot resist his call. But for now, I stay awake laying long against the earth's body, listening to him breathe. Just one more poem? Do more, two more. OK, I'll do a funny. Okay. Surviving the Winter, which is just written for Valentine's Day. Now first comes the celebration of foods the heavy cream adorning the sacred pie and the ritual consumption of the blessed Christmas cookies, that holy host of the season. Second, in the winter comes the snow, the ice, the blank sky, the biting wind, the binding and winding of limbs in layer and layer against the cold. And then, then comes February with its streakers, its cherubs startling us with its, their pink rolling bodies, just as our own, were quite forgotten. Oh, these pesky angels of love, how they demand heat from our flickering pilot lights and sparks from our wet old bones. Someday, spring will ignite us with its succulence, its striptease, its feast for every famished sense. But for now, we must enjoy the lurid red kiss of the greenhouse grown roses and the paper thin pre made love of heart shaped cards. And with this, we might generate just enough warmth to get us through this winter to the spring together. This is After All the Mystery, and uh, it refers to that delicious cupcake that uh, Josh and Stevie were singing about. So, uh, you know, cupcakes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. After All the Mystery. Even when consciousness is precisely measured, charted from the exact nanosecond it enters in utero, even when our minds are proven to be particle colliders and angels explained as charged thought, even when fiction is registered as prescient knowledge and studied in school as a history of the future, even when we can graph the genetics of all our possible offspring and analyze the ancestry that brought us together at this exact place and time, Yes, even when our lives are computed and quantified, even then there will still be one mystery, the mystery of our two bodies crackling with electricity, conducting like two Tesla coils, sudden and beyond all rational explanation, as we practice the ancient magic of a holy physical communion unknowable to any science. Yes even when so many questions are answered, I know that this unanswerable intensity will continue to be studied and measured and probed. And even then, it will never lack for willing volunteers. Awesome job as usual. Hey, Jake, I lied, buddy. We're gonna get to you. No matter what, we're gonna get to you. Okay. So be excited about Jake. But first, we're going to have David Bellow. David Bellow, are you still around? David Bellow going once, going twice. Sold, Jake. You are up, buddy. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming out to the open mic and sticking around. Uh, when I first got here, I didn't realize uh, I would be having to do clean comedy, which I feel like is hard 
for a comedian. I just soak up the dirt in life most of the time. It's kind of like a bath mat. You can't ever get those things completely clean. They have all the sins of the bathroom stuck deep in the fibers. Can't get that out. As you can probably tell, uh, I cut my own hair recently, and uh, it didn't go well uh, on this side. Uh, so now I just got to kind of pretend like I had a traumatic brain injury, and now I'm going to get surgery. They just haven't gotten the scar yet. They haven't gotten in there yet. Uh, so, uh, so I'm 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 on the autism spectrum. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm an Aspie, and uh, like it's always like I was one of the the weird kids growing up in school. Like I wasn't I wasn't like uh, special needs though. People always got that confused. Like the easiest way I can explain it is I wasn't the kid that rode the short bus to school. I was the kid that got shoved into lockers for being a weirdo. Like that's basically what I was, and. Uh, like basically, like I, like I, like I have a lot of, uh, of things that I struggle with, like talking to people, basic communication, and I work in customer service, which isn't a good fit for somebody like me. Uh, I feel like a good rule of thumb for any corporation is you don't want the face of your organization to be represented by a kid that doesn't like looking people in the face. Like that's probably not a good idea. Uh, I remember I, I have a lot of bad habits. I jumble up my words a lot. Like one time, uh, there was a guy checking out on my line, and he went to leave the store. And I go to tell him, bye, have a nice day. But for some reason, I had the word stick in my head. So I just combined that with what I was trying to say. And what I ended up telling the guy was, bye, have a nice dick. Which, to be fair, isn't a, a mean thing to say to somebody. Like, that's technically a compliment. It's just not appropriate to say to a stranger, you know. And this guy was totally cool about it. He was totally cool. He just looks back at me and he's like, all right, you enjoy your dick too, bye-bye. And he leaves the store like, dang it, I wish I, wish I had the same confidence as that guy. He was unfazed by that. He, he had immediate comeback. I've always been in a perceptive child. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, my mom was bringing in groceries from the grocery store, and uh, she accidentally put a carton of eggs in the freezer, and my response was, yeah, mom, maybe if you had done that with your eggs, I wouldn't have come out autistic. So if you had just done that, <laughs> it might have worked out better for me. Uh, I was recently at the, the dog park, and... Uh, there were some people that were getting into a fight. Like, people in Denver really take uh, their dog's relationship seriously. Like, people really get angry about that stuff. There was a lady who was upset. She thought that someone else's dog was playing too rough with her dog. And they started arguing and fighting. She threatened to call the police. And the guy was like, hey, what are you, you going to do? What are you going to do, lady? And she's like, you don't know what I'm capable of. And that's when my nerd like response kicked in because I'm like, oh man, this is like that thing in a superhero movie where like like a gang of like bikers intimidates the superhero in a bar. You know, I was like, man, you should probably step off. I think this lady is about to shoot lightning bolts out of her hand or something. Like you should probably chill out. This is about to turn into an X-Men movie. <laughs> uh, dating is very hard. Uh, I've been doing online dating recently, and uh, it, it, it's really hard because I feel like like it's it's all about your information. Like they just have all of your your information on there. Like it's like and and like women obsess over that kind of stuff, and and they deserve to because they've got to figure out like what type of what type of guy they're getting into on these dating apps. Uh, like I feel like the way that women obsess over that stuff is the way that guys obsess over fantasy football. Like, it's just all about stats. It's all about projections of where you think this relationship is going to go. You know, it's all about stock. You know, like, I feel like, like a lot of women on dating apps, they won't even swipe right on a guy uh, if, his, if he doesn't reach above six feet. Which I feel like is like the NBA rules. Like, I feel like, you know, if you're below six feet, 
you're not going to get drafted, buddy. You've got to go play in Europe or China, somewhere where the competition isn't as fierce, I feel like. Uh, uh, you guys are fun. I, uh, I'll leave you with this. I, uh, I remember I, I'm a kid of the 90s. Like, I remember when, uh, when parents started really getting soft in this country. Like, I was, I was the experiment of that, basically. Like, I remember when participation trophies first became a thing in the 90s. I remember they became popular. I was, uh, I was running track, and I was one of the worst kids on the team. I would always finish uh, towards the bottom of the pack. And uh, our track coach came up with the idea one day of giving everyone a participation trophy who finished the race because he noticed a bunch of us never got a medal, none of us never got recognition, and so the next race, he gave everybody a participation trophy on our team, uh, which is actually bad because before that, I could just lose anonymously, like nobody knew who I was, but now I had to carry around a trophy dedicated to my mediocrity, <laughs> like a beacon for bullies. You know, like the teachers thought that they were like boosting our self-esteem and helping us out, but all they were really doing was creating a new minority for people to pick on in school. Like those liberals thought that they were doing, like they had the right idea. I don't know. Anyways, I'm Jake Cambron. It's been fun. You guys have a good night.